Good morning and welcome back to another ingredient deep dive video. Now today's video is going to be about sodium hydroxide. Now it's one of those most often asked questions is can I make soap without lime? So in this video we're going to look at it and we are actually going to touch on a huge amount of other information as well. It was supposed to be a short video but I suspect that this is going to turn out a little bit longer. But um, just go down in the description box. I will put in timestamps in there. So if you want to skip over certain things and just want to um, watch certain parts of the video, then you're welcome to do that as well. But let's just quickly look at my list. I actually wrote it down because I started to write down questions that's been asked on um, social media, on Facebook and so on. So I hope that this video is going to answer all of your questions. Okay, so the first one is, what is sodium hydroxide or better known as lye or acoustic soda? Then do we need lye to make soap or can we make soap without lye or is that a lie? <laughs> so we're going to look at that as well. Then is it poisonous? Um, is it dangerous? And then we're going to look at lye safety, how to handle it safely um, because um, it certainly needs to be respected but you don't need to fear it. So we will get to that as well. Then how much lye to use in your um, recipe or your formulations? How much water that you need to use with your lye and then the different kinds of lye because you do get different kinds of lye for um, soap, in soap making. Um, you get uh, hard soap, then you get liquid soap and then you get a soft soap in between as well which is going to use a dual lye so I will explain that to you as well. And then lastly I'm going to tell you how you can make beautiful soaps without handling raw lye um, if that is your choice. So. We will get to that, but first let's see what is lye and why do we need to use it. Okay, to make soap we need different ingredients. Now we usually start out with oil. Um, most people know that we use oil to make soap. Um, oil consists out of fatty acids and we need a chemical reaction to change the fatty acids in the oil so that we can get soap molecules. So to demonstrate the basics that you can actually see what's happening, I've got some vinegar water here so I've colored it a little bit so that you can see it better so this represents our oil um, with fatty acids in it so this vinegar is an acid and then we have a little bit of uh, bicarbonate of soda um, so this most people will know from school days so the moment when you add water to your uh, vinegar reaction nothing much is going to happen but the moment when you put an alkali which is our bicarb of soda and we add it to our vinegar we get a chemical reaction so this is basically what is happening in soap making with bicarb and vinegar what is happening here is um, the moment when it reacts it creates carbon dioxide and we've got water and we've got sodium acetate. Now sodium acetate is actually awesome to clean um, uh, rust and scale of stuff. So this is already a very um, awesome cleaning agent. And to neutralize it, you need a certain amount of vicob um, that you're going to have to keep on adding until there's no chemical reaction happening anymore. So you will see if I add more, we still get another reaction here. And we can keep on adding um, bicarb until there's no reaction happening anymore. Then. Okay, the reaction is not as violent here. Um, I think I'm a little bit too close to it. But the reaction becomes less and less, uh, I can't say violent, but anyhow. But I'm going to add a little bit more here. You see, it's still reacting, but it's not reacting as much. So we are getting close to a point where the acids are neutralized in our mixture here. So now that is the main thing that we want to happen in our soap making. We want to add enough lye acoustic soda that we can actually saponify all of our oils. You see? There is very, very little reaction left here. So this should be a very neutral pH now. So, yes. Back to our soap making. If we measure the correct amount of lye, um, the correct amount of lye um, regarding to our oils, 
then it will get to a neutral state where it's not going to react anymore. So at that stage, if you measure everything correctly, at the end of the reaction, there is no raw line left in your soap anymore. So that can take, the reaction can take a little bit of a while. Um, it can take up to 48 hours. Um, then your, safe, oh, your soap should be safe to handle. Okay, so as you have seen, the moment when we add bicarb and vinegar together, then we get a, a, a chemical reaction and the end product is not bicarb and vinegar anymore. We do have here carbon dioxide and sodium acetate and water left. So the same thing happens when we are mixing oils with sodium hydroxide is we get a chemical reaction and the end product there is in eventually is soap molecules, um, water and we've got glycerin as a byproduct there. So we need something to get the chemical reaction, we need something to change the fatty acids into soap. So you cannot make soap without lye. Lye is needed for the chemical reaction. So we do get different types of lyes. Um, you do get soap that is not really soap, um, that does not contain any lye, that is synthetic detergent. Um, so synthetic detergents is something totally different. With synthet synthetic detergents, they don't use oil at all as well. So that is something uh, synthetic that, they, well, it's in the name, synthetic detergents, yeah, really, <laughs> answer. Um, so yeah, but that is a synthetic version of um, stuff that actually grabs hold onto oil and water and you can wash stuff away with that as well. Now, with a soap molecule, it's very interesting. A soap molecule, the way that it works is the one, it, it makes a chain and it's got two ends. The one end is hydrophilic, so it loves water, and the other side is um, lipophilic. You think about liposuction, so it, it's, it loves oil. So you've got a, a water-loving side and an oil-loving side, and what happens is usually the dirt get trapped in the oil-loving side, so it grabs onto the oil, it grabs onto a water molecule when you start to use it to wash and it just rinses away. So that's just the interesting part that was not supposed to be part of the lye. That is actually a soap soap thingy. But that is why we need sodium hydroxide or a, a, a kind of a lye as well. So you can't make soap without it. Um, you can make a detergent um, with synthetic detergents, but that is not soap making. Um, Soap making is actually quite easy to do if you just know the very basics. Okay, so now we need to know how much lye do you need for your oil. Now, every oil, if every kind of oil have a different fatty acid profile. Um, for example, if you look at um, coconut oil, it is high in lauric acid, um, which makes lovely bubbles. Um, Olive oil is high in oleic acid, and every kind of acid needs a different amount of lye to saponify all the oils. So yeah, this magical reaction is called saponification. So um, what you need to do is you can have a, 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 um, a list of all the oils and then the sap values. The sap value is an abbreviation for the saponification value for each oil. So that little number that you get there, it's a 0 0.134 sometimes or whatever it is for a certain oil. That is the, the amount of lye that you need to saponify one gram of oil. So you, for example, if you, if you got an oil that um, ask for 0 0.135, it's 0 0.135 grams for every gram of oil that you use. So. The lovely thing is we have soap calculators. Um, I will leave a link in the description box um, to teach you how to use a soap calculator. It's actually quite easy. They contain all the information. So that is also why it's important if you get a recipe from the internet or from a friend or you found one somewhere in a book that Granny made, always run it through a soap calculator because um, commas get left out very easily. Mistakes in print happen and um, there are sometimes awesome recipes out there and there are really terrible ones as well. So, and you will never know until you've run it through the soap calculator. So, look at the link. Um, I explain very in, in quite in detail how to use the soap calculator, how to check a recipe, how to formulate your own recipe. But just remember, different 
oils require different amounts of lye or acoustic soda. So you can't just swap one oil out for another oil. So you can't just decide, you know what, I don't have enough olive oil, I'm just going to swap it out for coconut oil. Then your recipe will definitely be lye heavy, so there's going to be lye left over and it's going to irritate your skin. If you have a good recipe and you measure everything out perfectly, then you will have a neutral soap that is not going to be acoustic anymore, so it's not going to burn your skin. There's no lye or raw lye left in your um, soap then. It will be all soap molecules, water and uh, glycerin. So, yes. The other thing is people ask, is lye poisonous? Lye is not poisonous. Lye is just a very strong alkali. Um, they actually use it in many food preparations. For example, um, pretzels. Pretzels are one of the things that if you look at the back of the ingredient list, you will see that they use sodium hydroxide as a acidity regulator. So it's just a strong alkali. It's, it's basically bicarbs on steroids. So it's a very strong bicarb. It's, okay, it's not bicarb. The people that are very technical will take me out for that one, but it's basically bicarb on steroids. So it's a strong alkali, um, it's not poisonous. Um, the moment when you mix enough uh, vinegar with it, then you're going to neutralize it at some stage. So then it's not even going to be acoustic anymore, as with the vinegar and the acoustic soda thingy there. Okay, now that we've established that it is not poisonous, the next question is, is it dangerous? Um, it is about as dangerous as boiling water. Um, in a double layer. Uh, with boiling water, it can cause burns because of the heat. With acoustic soda, the moment when you add it to water, the chemical reaction also produces a lot of heat. So it can give you a burn because of the heat, and it also are very acoustic, so it can give you a chemical burn as well. With sodium hydroxide, even if it's cooled down to room temperature, you still treat it as if it is boiling water because of the possibility of chemical burns. So, yeah, you need to respect it. You definitely need to respect lye, but you don't need to fear it. It is not going to jump up or blow up, whatever. If you take all the safety precautions, then you can handle this, this thing like lye, lye safety. If you make coffee, you have to pay attention to what you are doing so that you don't get hurt in the process. And the same is with lye. So, okay, let's look at what is lye safety and how do we handle lye in a safe manner. Okay, the first thing is um, you need a well-ventilated place. Um, the first four or five seconds, um, the moment when you add the light to the water, it's going to produce a lot of heat, the steam, and there are a little bit of a vapor that can irritate your lungs is tremendously. Um, I've made the mistake more than once to actually inhale some of that and, and, and you will go in a coughing fit completely. So if you are healthy, you will survive it. But if you've got um, health issues, lung issues and so on, I would actually advise get yourself a good respirator. Make sure you've got good ventilation. Um, normally within 5 to 10 seconds that vapor is gone and then you can stand close to your container and you can just keep on stirring it. Open window is a good thing. Outside is a good thing. Just be careful if you are walking around with a container of acoustic soda, you can trip, you can bump into stuff. So it's better to actually just leave it on the table. Um, or if you have got the extraction fan um, over your stove top, then you can use the extraction fan as well. But just the open window will be more than sufficient. Um, so I've been making soap this way for many years now, and the only ones few times that I actually made the mistake of, of breathing it in was because I was not paying attention. I was just standing too close um, and half over the container, so that was one of my mistakes. Never stand over the container with your head looking down into the cup because then you're going to get a whiff of that. Then the other thing is we're going to use safety gear. The reason why we wear safety gear is just to protect yourself against any spills and splatters. If you make coffee with a stick blender, then safety glasses might be a good idea as well. So it is, I think this is the thing that, that, that scares people the most. It looks like we are going into some nuclear uh, thing and yeah, it, 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 it looks more dangerous than it actually is. Okay, your safety gear is most probably gonna be there for many years, not even protecting you against a single splatter. But the problem is, that one day that there is a splatter that flies out or you are, because we tend to, to, to work with soap batter as if it's food and we will bang the spoon on the side and, and little pieces can fling up. So if 
a piece of soap batter flings into your eye, then you're going to be glad that you were wearing safety glasses if it does not hit your eye because it will burn your eye, it can do great damage. If you have the unfortunate experience of getting lye into your eye for not wearing your glasses or some weird reason or getting it on your skin, then solution is uh, um, dilution is the solution. You're going to dilute it with clean water. Rinse it and keep on rinsing it and make sure that you've rinsed it properly and completely. I started soap making with the idea that you need to add uh, vinegar if you get a lye burn or something. But as you just have seen, the moment when you add vinegar to a acoustic substance, there's a chemical reaction and that chemical reaction cre um, creates more heat. So the moment when you spill lye on your skin or something, you add vinegar, you're actually creating a chemical reaction. So the best thing is to rinse with water and um, let the water flow for a, for a while, make sure that you've rinsed everything off. So remember, dilution is a solution. Please do not put vinegar on, on any light burn. Um, it can actually do more harm than good. I know you will read a lot and hear a lot um, about vinegar. Keep vinegar close by. I've used to have this little spray bottle of vinegar everywhere where I went with my soap making stuff. Luckily, I never had to use it um, because I think it would have been a mistake. So yes, then the next thing. Okay, when you add your light to the water, uh, every time when I talk about it, I say you add the light to the water, but to just um, bring it home, um, the snow always falls on the lake. Remember that. Um, you never, then the lake will never fall in the snow. The um, sequence when you add stuff together is important. You need to add your snow, your lye, need to fall on the lake. Um, the moment when you add water to lye, it's a little bit of water that actually um, creates a very quick reaction. And if you, there's not enough water to actually absorb some of that heat, then it can give a more violent reaction there. So remember always, it's easy to remember, the snow always falls on the lake. If you do it in the right way around, then you're gonna have very little reaction um, regarding, it's, it's not gonna boil up or anything. Um, and always make sure that your water is at least, um, or your liquid, because you can use different things, you can use milk and all kinds of stuff. Make sure that it is at least room temperature or colder. Um, if it's room temperature or colder, then you're not going to get a violent reaction where it's going to boil over and so on. So, and the last part of our life safety is to use the correct containers to mix it in. You can use number two plastic. If you look at the little triangle underneath the um, container that you're using, number two um, can withstand acoustic soda. Number five is another one that can withstand acoustic soda and stainless steel. Make sure you are not using any um, cast iron or um, aluminum because the acoustic soda will react with it. You're going to destroy your pan or your pot and you can't use that soap as well. Um, number two is good with standing uh, uh, the acoustic soda, but usually it's a softer plastic. So the moment when it generates heat, then it can be a little hard to, to handle it. Number five for me is the better one um, between the two of them. Number one, stay away from it. Um, I've made the mistake once to mix my lye solution. I decided I want to store it. I'm not going to be able to make my soap immediately. I poured it into a plastic bottle. That is usually your soda bottles and so on is in number one plastic. And it looked fine because it was already cooled down. And I've placed it on my table. Then the next morning when I entered the room, it was one whole big freaking more mess because the bottle um, dissolved because of the lie um, during the night and I had a whole acoustic mess over my table on my floor everywhere and trust me you don't want to uh, clean up acoustic soda mess so go okay the other thing is glass um, glass depending on what kind of glass you use but I would say rather stay away from glass completely um, the moment when you add your acoustic soda to your water it generates a lot of heat um, so it will move from 20 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees Celsius within seconds. So it, it's a very quick temperature change that happens. So glass can experience a thermal shock and it can crack. And then you, again, you have a whole big acoustic mess over everything. So for safety, 100% go for stainless steel or for your number two or your number five plastic. 
Okay, this is going to be adding somewhere in the video because I forgot to mention it. Your light to water ratio. Um, if your recipe calls for 100 grams of lye, then the least amount of water that you can use to dissolve that lye is 100 grams. Um, we call that a one-to-one -one ratio. It is also called 50% because 50% of the mixture between the lye and the water, 50% is going to be lye and 50% is going to be water. Then you can go for cold process soap. You can go up to a one to two ratio. So it's one part lye and two parts water. Now that is going to be um, 100 grams of lye, for example, and 200 grams of water. So um, it's a one to two. They also call it 33%. Now that is where the confusing part comes in. The percentage part always points to the lie ratio or the lie in the ratio. So 33.3333% is gonna be lie and then 66.6666% is gonna be the water in a one to two ratio. Then if you do hot process soap, hot process soap is basically the same as cold process soap. You just add a little bit more water and after trash, you're gonna add heat to it as well. The reason why you add more water is because some of it is gonna cook out because of the heat. So for your hot process soap, they usually go um, 1.28. Yeah, it's a 1.28. I very rarely make hot process soap. Uh, sorry, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, it's 1.28 and it's going to be 28%. I have to think deep and hard now. So again, that 28% is in relation to what the lie is. So it's going to be 28% lie and the rest of it, whatever the math is going to be, is going to be the water part. So just to, to explain to you the, the important thing and with lie safety as well, make sure that you have at least the same amount of water than what you have in lie. If you get to a point when you want to add or use something else like milk, you will have a little, need to use a little bit more than a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, because if you go one-to-one, uh, -one, one part lye and one part milk, um, a part of that milk is milk solids and fats and stuff, whatever. So it's not, not, not all liquid. So you're going to have to use a little bit more. That is why we've got this range for cold process soap is one-to-one. -one up to one to two. So you can use anything in between there. Okay, so I've remembered to add this in there as well. This is not really lye safety or anything, but you do have different kinds of lime. You have sodium hydroxide that you are going to make bar soap with, and we have potassium hydroxide, which are being used for liquid soaps. So make sure if you buy your hydroxide, that you buy the correct one. Usually um, sodium hydroxide or lye acoustic soda, is the one that is very readily available. You have to really go and search for potassium hydroxide, um, at least here in South Africa. Um, I think we've got about two or three suppliers that I know of where you can actually buy potassium hydroxide. Most of the other soap making suppliers only sells the sodium hydroxide. So, and then you can get the dew lye, which is actually an amazing thing, especially for um, shaving soaps, where you can use half the potassium hydroxide, half of your recipe is gonna be um, sodium hydroxide, and then you get a much softer soap that is um, much more soluble. For shaving soap, this is awesome. But more of that, you know, I've got the shaving soap video as well, so you can go and just check through the playlist if that is something that interests you, but just to take note, there are different kinds of sodium hydroxide, different kinds of hydroxides. Sodium hydroxide being one of them and potassium hydroxide being the other one. Okay, then the last thing. If you want to make soap and um, you don't want to handle lye, then you can buy an already made soap base. Um, your uh, melt and pour bases or glycerin soap bases um, was made of lye, so it's not a lye-free soap. So this is not where the term gets a little bit mingled, the mangled or whatever, because lye was used to make the soap, but there is no lye left in the soap after the saponification process. So, but if you are not comfortable with handling lye, for some reason or other, it doesn't matter why, you can still use soap bases or melt and pour bases. It's also called um, uh, glycerin soap. And with those, you just actually heat it up in a microwave or in a double boiler and you can pour it and you can add a little bit of glitter and send it so on to it. But I know they are being frowned upon the soap base 
soap makers because most people say they are not making soap. Just let it roll off your back like water off a duck's back um, because there is a little bit of a superiority thing between some people um, in soap making. For me, to give you an idea is um, years back I baked novelty cakes and I was invited to a birthday party and this mommy told me, you know what, I'm so sorry I couldn't afford to use you for the birthday cake. Um, and I told her, you know what, you don't need to use me for a birthday cake. Um, she said, but she just bought a, 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 a already made cake and she decorated that. And um, it was just before they blew out the candles and they blew out the candles and the little boy turned to one of his friends and said, my mommy made me this cake. And the main thing is, you know what, it doesn't matter if you made the cake from scratch, if you got the my cake was made by somebody else, if you just got the cake and you just decorated it, as long as it makes you happy. That is the main thing. Enjoy your soap making. Enjoy the soap making journey. Um, if you want to start out with melt and pour, just ignore all the naysayers. Um, as long as you are happy with the end product, then it's awesome. Um, I've tried melt and pour. It is not freaking well easy. It is bloody hot. I've got ADHD. I do not have the attention span for melt and pour soap. So I actually take off my hat for people that actually can concentrate, get the temperature right and do their thing with melt and pour because really it is not it is not easy. <laughs> so I actually want to um, encourage all the, the from scratch soap makers that are frowning upon this to go and try it at least once because for me it was not a good experience. I gave up because I didn't have the patience, I do not have the attention span. So go for it. Uh, it's also a nice thing to do with children because you're not working with raw lye and, and because you're only heating it up around about I think 60 degrees Celsius um, if you have a little, uh, if you have children that can already carry a cup of coffee around to sound or whatever, then it's a safe way to introduce them to soap making. So yeah, and that's all of it. Um, I just want to say, enjoy your soap making journey. Um, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Um, I've already covered some of the ingredients that we've done a deep dive on, but if there's anything else that you want to deep dive on, just tell me and then I will make a video about it. And yeah, happy soaping until I see you guys next time again. Keep well and keep safe.